Caddis Maximus here. Doing more of a close-up review of this Milwaukee 4822 9013 90 excuse me, 24-inch half-inch drive brake, super duty breaker bar. I'm calling it super duty because um it really is super duty, particularly with the head. The head is actually very overbuilt on this uh breaker bar. It's pretty surprising. Like many other power tool companies, particularly DeWalt, which is Stanley Black & Decker, Milwaukee has been getting heavy into the hand tools. And actually, um, Milwaukee's slogan was <laughs> nothing but heavy duty. They've had some misses over the years, particularly uh, since the buyout. But they've actually also had some real good successes. Um they are just really right on target. I know that they're cordless impact wrenches. They make some of the biggest ones now. Uh, I know that they had some issue where they had changed the design recently on one of their cordless impact wrenches that had problems with the gears. And they actually, uh, I don't know if they recalled it, but they stopped, They actually responded to the community and stopped making it and went back to the old design. So they're actually kind of with it. And from like what I've seen with the ratchets and some of the YouTube test videos, Milwaukee's ratchets, and particularly the anvils, actually are testing pretty darn strong. They snap, they're like 3 8 ratchets. Uh, anvils will snap at like 300 foot pounds. It's pretty crazy. This was $43 at Home Depot. And thought for $43, this is something I'm definitely going to recommend just because it's a 24 inch half inch drive breaker bar. We have Milwaukee stamped on one side, but not on both sides. I don't know exactly why they didn't do both sides, but they should have. Do like this kind of flattened design on the handle. It just gives a little, and it's flared, gives a nice grip. And when you have it straight, then these two flats actually give you some kind of, uh, per, uh, I like to use the word purchase because it gives you a good, a better grip so you can actually twist the breaker bar. I guess the one criticism is I would have liked to seen a ball detent to keep it in the straight position because that's really, you know, it seems maybe a third of break of what are often called hinge handles. These types of breaker bars, the ball detent just keeps it straight, and I do like that. What I find interesting is this is a little bit thicker than three eighths. This is about four hundred uh, ten thousandths, or excuse me. Yeah, around around four hundred and ten thousandths. It's uh, closer to all. Oh, it's just shy of seven sixteenths, but it's really wide. And so what they have is this little ring here is actually acting as a flange to help kind of take the forces that are applied to this wide bar, uh, boss right here and make sure that it's evenly applied to the half inch square. Because of course the half inch square is wider than this. They couldn't just machine both these parts here. I suspect that the reason this isn't just half inch wide is they're trying to prevent the head from getting too wide because as you can see here, they have extra thick forks. These forks are three eighths of an inch thick. Extra heavy duty screw, pretty thick, and the forks are really shallow. So they have much less like likelihood of spreading apart. It does have a friction, but it's probably just a little undercut area with like a little split washer in there and a nice flare to really make the head uh, hold up pretty well. Ball detent is well centered. Pretty strong. I'd say that's about average. I'm able to press it in, so I wouldn't say it's super strong. Like not like some snap-on tools have ball detents that are practically <laughs> locked the tools onto them. But it's definitely a pretty strong ball detent, and it can hold the weight of the breaker bar just holding it by the socket. Anyway, for $43, I mean, heck, for the steel handle icon, it is $40. Bucks. For the flex handle icon, or excuse me, for the comfort grip icon, is $45. Yeah, you can get a... Milwaukee's warranty is, of course, lifetime on the hand tools. I don't know if it's quite as easy as walking the Harbor Freight and swapping it out. Um... But for almost the same price, I think the head's going to end up being stronger. I do like the icon design here just because, um, you know, it does have a nice rounded area. So this buckle is definitely extra strong or pretty strong. But we can see the forks. And if we say put the, well, we'll do it this way. If we take the width of the Milwaukee here 
and get it just about flush. We can see that the Milwaukee is almost an eighth inch wider overall. And if we look side by side, it may be easier this way. You can clearly see that the forks on the Milwaukee are thicker than they are on the Icon here. And as far as the width, or the thickness I should say, it's just a little bit thicker. Really, it's too hard to, to see, so what we'll do is we'll just measure, make sure I got that zeroed. We'll just measure it. The width of the Milwaukee head here is about 1.304 inches. The width of the Icon head is 1.97, so about 1.2 inches versus 1.3 inches. So the Milwaukee head is a whole tenth of an inch wider. And then as far as the thickness, the thickness of the Milwaukee head is right at just under, it's three quarters of an inch, it's 744 thousandths. So three quarters of an inch thick there. And on the Icon, oh, I was wrong. The Icon's actually a little bit thicker, 785 thousandths. And so what that means is the Icon is 50 thousandths thicker this way, but a 100 thousandths narrower this way. So I really do believe that the Milwaukee is still heavier duty than the Icon. So I'll just put that out there since the Harbor Freights are so, you know, ubiquitous, I should say. I don't know how this video got so long. Anyway, just to do a little side by side, here we have a uh, snap on uh, 15B. You can see it kind of dwarfs that. We do have a vintage SK41653 here. And this SK has a pretty heavy duty head, but still the Milwaukee even dwarfs that. We have one of these heavy duty Macs. This is a Mac uh, V18F. This is the 18 inch Mac where they kind of do the opposite where it has like this extra strong head. Just gives a lot of extra strength when they have the buckle forged in the handle and they have the big forks on the head. This Mac is also super duty. But we can even see here that the Milwaukee is, it's just pretty stout, to tell you the truth. And even comparing to this uh, Armstrong, what is this? This is a 12918, which was my previous, one of my previous Super Duty ones. It's just super thick, and that's really what I'm talking so much about, is I was just looking at it, and I thought, I mean, they really went overkill on this breaker bar, I am sure. That the anvil is what's going to twist off when you when something does fail on it and they just did a really good job here they even have some nice rounding here so it's just um even the cutouts here aren't square so preventing stress risers and judging if the ratchets are anything to go by i'm sure this breaker bar is really gonna uh, hold up certainly get some pretty good reviews and for you know 45 bucks for a 24 inch, just a big long breaker bar. That's pretty, seems to be pretty well made. Can't really deny it, to tell you the truth. Just wish they would have put Milwaukee logo on both sides. I guess just for the fun of it. Otherwise, I kind of like this handle shape. Wanted to make this kind of a longer video because um, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing more and more Milwaukee hand tools if they continue to kind of design and engineer them like this where they're just uh, extra robust. Anyway, if you haven't subscribed, please do. See you next time.